Jerusalem, the Holy City, the center focus of the three major monotheistic religions. It is accepted that Jerusalem is of immense value to adherents of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And yet the importance of Jerusalem as a holy city was not always taken for granted, as we see in the way that Jerusalem was portrayed by Islamic sources during the first century of the Crusades. It has to be admitted that the status of Jerusalem fluctuated in the medieval Islamic world. Its religious importance as a center for the other two great monotheistic faiths, Judaism and Christianity, made it vulnerable in the view of some Muslim thinkers to the criticism that the Islamic sanctity of Jerusalem was tainted by the influence of Judeo-Christian traditions and innovations. However, the Crusades helped to change the place of Jerusalem in the cosmology of Islamic holy spaces. By the 12th century, Muslims longed with increasing intensity to repossess Jerusalem, and the city came to be the focal point for a highly successful campaign of jihad propaganda, culminating in its reconquest by Saladin in 1187. The beginnings of Jerusalem's growing importance occurred under the Fatimids, who saw Jerusalem as important in securing not only their religious credentials, but also their political ones as well. During the reign of al-Zahir, who died in 1036, the Aqsa Mosque was rebuilt, its imperial mosaic inscription is the first one in Jerusalem to begin with the Quranic verse, which Muslims believe refers to Muhammad's ascent into heaven. It is difficult to pinpoint precisely when Muslim military leaders began to focus on the reconquest of Jerusalem as an integral or even central part of their ambitions. The original loss of the city in 1099 to Western Crusaders until the fall of Edessa to Muslim forces in 1141 did not seem to register all that much in the Islamic consciousness. However, with the successes of Zengi over the Crusader state of Edessa, this began to change, when the city began to loom as a focus for jihad against the Franks near the end of Zengi's life. This focus began to really intensify during the career of his son Nuraldin, as Jerusalem became a major theme of the program jihad propaganda emanating from the cities of Syria and above all Damascus. We see in this propaganda campaign the rise of what is known as Merits of Jerusalem literature, Merit's literature had a long history in Islamic culture, incorporating any number of variations on meritorious religious behaviors, such as pilgrimage to Mecca, the merits of fighting holy war, or literature based on the qualities of the Quran. The Merit's of Jerusalem literature is little known in the West, and almost none have been translated into European languages. The earliest of this literature dates to 1019 by the Shafite preacher al wasidi Like books on Jihad, the Merit's of Jerusalem works are a collection of hadith group under various predictable headings. The 34 sections of the work of al wasiti include merits of visiting Jerusalem, the superiority of prayer and pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the merits of the Dome of the Rock, the merits of dying in Jerusalem, the prophet's ascent into heaven, the connections of the city with the Day of Judgment, and so on. It is fair to say that the rise of the merits of Jerusalem literature nearly 50 years after the fall of Jerusalem was a belated response to the Muslim loss of the city in 1099 and the realization by Muslims of their need to regain the Holy City for Islam. Between 1099 and 1150, no work of this kind seems to have been written, although it could be expected that the Crusaders' capture of Jerusalem and their attachment to it might have enhanced the Muslims' desire to possess it. Indeed, it was during the career of Nuruddin that the idea of liberating Jerusalem seems to have been reinforced by an official, or at least government-approved, propaganda campaign using the merits of Jerusalem literature as a, as a weapon. Thus, in the 1060s, the genre reappears after a long period of silence, under the guiding hand of the historian and traditionalist Ibn Asakir, the head of Hadith scholarship in Damascus and the personal friend of Nuruddin. Even in his history of Damascus, which has survived, he devotes a lengthy chapter to Jerusalem and Palestine. This proliferation of merits of Jerusalem literature enhanced the desire on the part of Muslims to reconquer Jerusalem. It is significant that Ibn Asakir's works glorifying Jerusalem were read out publicly to large audiences in Damascus from 1160 onwards. Such public meetings no doubt intensified popular awareness of the sanctity of Jerusalem and built up the expectation that the holy city would be recaptured, which it would be by Nuruddin's nephew Saladin, restoring to the Muslim mind the holy city back to its rightful